The Minecraft mob vote. It's one of the most interesting and controversial times of the year. The one time where the community has almost direct impact on the game and oh boy does it divide the internet. More interestingly though, are the mobs from a few years ago that never got in and were simply in concept form. What would they be like if they were in the game? Could Minecraft have been very different? Will they ever be added in the future? Also, since when was the sun round? Today we're going to be talking about the history of Minecraft's mob and biome votes, the regrets the community have, what the game could have been like, and Minecraft's very first community votes all the way back in 2011, which majority of you wouldn't even know had occurred. So let's get right into it. Oh and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps me out. The sun. We all recognize that glowing square and use it to determine how much of a Minecraft day is left. First properly added to the game in February of 2010 during Minecraft InDev, the sun is one of the few Minecraft features which actually still looks identical today, over 11 years later. However, that wasn't always the case. On October the 13th, 2011, Minecraft 1.9 Beta Pre-Release 4 was released, a pre-release version of Minecraft 1.0. And in this version, the sun looked like this. Feels wrong, I know. Same goes for the moon, which was changed to this circular shape as well. Notch would tweet this out, I'm making the moon and sun round. I am very sorry. While he didn't elaborate, users suggested that the initial idea stemmed from the addition of moon phases to the game in the same update, suggesting that moon phases would look silly if the sun was just square. And Notch would respond confirming this. However, players quickly took a disliking to this new moon and sun, with many players complaining on the forums suggesting it felt un-Minecraft like and mentioning how they had grown accustomed to the blocky square shaped sun and moon. It seemed Notch wasn't sure if this change was a good idea, and as such it was put to a vote. On October the 14th, 2011, on the official Minecraft Facebook page, not Twitter, the community got to vote if they wanted a square or round sun and moon. The vote was close and it looked like it could go either way, but overall, Square prevailed with 80,000 votes. Interestingly, you can still actually vote in this poll today, it's still open. Nevertheless, the first ever Minecraft community vote concluded and the sun and moon were reverted to their square shape and it has stayed that way even to this day, 10 years later. Now, before we get to the juicy stuff, did you know that in May of 2014, another community contribution took place? Jeb would take to the Minecraft subreddit to ask players what his new block should be called, linking this texture here. He mentioned that he didn't want it to have a rock or ite based name, preferring something like Neptune or Shale. Anyways, 1,900 comments were left on the thread, but ultimately, Reddit user AjaxGB would suggest Prismarine, whose account is now deleted by the way, and Jeb would make this name official upon adding Prismarine into the game. In November of 2017, during Minecraft Live, it was announced for the first time that players would get the chance to vote one of four new mobs into the game. In the announcement video, Jeb mentions that the mobs which don't get voted in will be gone forever. And remember to vote, because the free ones that you don't vote for will be gone forever. Talk about morbid. So stakes were high, as if you liked one of the mobs here and it didn't get voted in, say goodbye to any chance of ever getting to see it in-game. Four concept mobs were given and released with minimal details within the coming days, named Monster A, B, C and D. Mob A would look like this, a squid-like mob known as the Monster of the Ocean Depths, which can suck players down with its tentacles. The mob would spawn in the deep ocean biome, having a large mouth used to propel itself through the water. A truly terrifying mob, which really should have been in the mob vote instead of this boring thing, but we'll talk about that later. At the time, 1.13 hadn't released yet, and as such, oceans were very starved for content, with ocean monuments being their only draw. It would have been so cool to have an ocean mini-boss that would make traversing the oceans more scary, but alas, was knocked out in the first poll. Even though it had more votes than Mob D according to Twitter. Talk about injustice. Mob C was known as the Great Hunger, a lizard-like creature which can sink into the ground, camouflage, and consume mobs and items with its huge mouth. However, the most interesting thing about this mob was the fact that it had a great appetite for enchanting powers and would have been used to add or remove enchantments for players' items. This mob sounds like the most unique by far, with the ability to sink into the ground, camouflage, and even eat items and mobs, all being one of a kind. I could have seen it being used as a funky item disposal, or even as a kill mechanism in farms, but alas, it was voted out in the final poll. Mob D was known as the Hovering Inferno and is a type of blaze. Using this visual here, we can see it looks like it was wearing a crown of some sort with a gem. Maybe it was the king of blazes. 
Anyways, its body parts are used to defend itself from attacks, and it could attack players with a shockwave move. By far the most dangerous sounding mob of them all. And yet, all of these mobs with daunting looking illustrations, new mechanics, and one of a kind features lost to Mob B, the monster of the night skies, or the phantom. Now, surely the mob, which be all the other terrifying ones, would be the most original and unique. And yes, the phantom is, as it has the ability to fly and attack players. Wait. That's it? A shockwave boss like Mob, a player consuming camouflaging Mob, and a terrifying creature of the depths, all lost to a glorified bat. Okay, but there's a bit of hindsight bias here. Let's backtrack. Let me tell you what players likely would have thought the Phantom would be like when they voted it in. On a dark Minecraft night, a player is returning home from the mine. Following their well-lit path home, they have nothing to fear, until out of nowhere they hear the wicked screeches of the monster of the night. As they instantly break into a sprint, the phantom picks up chase, dodging and weaving around trees and corners in an epic pursuit. The player runs into a dead end, but manages to snipe the monster out of the sky at the very last moment. Relieved, the player continues to head home, only to hear the blood-curdling cries once more. The player darts into their base and waits out the night vowing to never be caught off guard by such a beast again. Sounds cool, right? But instead of blood-curdling cries, we got an ear-piercing screech. And instead of an intense chase, we got annoying hit detection. And instead of adrenaline fueled combat, we got this. An unfortunate ending to some of the coolest mob concepts we've ever seen in the game. 2018 saw a change of pace. Instead of voting for mobs, we got to vote for biomes, which included some mobs, unique blocks, and also some interesting features. And this time, the losers of the vote wouldn't be gone forever and sentenced by Jeb to the Shadow Realm, but instead would be updated in a future update. The desert was the first of the biomes, being pretty bland and boring at the time, and still is as a matter of fact. Besides going there to extract large quantities of sand, the desert is probably the biome barren of the most features. The update would add palm trees, meerkats, and oases. The desert was voted as the last biome to be updated. The savanna is a biome which is also quite uninteresting, with its drab dreary colour scheme. The acacia trees and wood are nice, but the only cool thing about the biome is its plateau terrain generation. The update proposed the addition of termites and what seemed to be termite nests, ostriches, and baobab trees, which look like this in real life. The savanna would get voted as the second biome to be updated. Finally, we had the tiger, which added campfires, foxes, and these annoying berries. The tiger biome was updated a few months later in 1.14. Personally, I would have wanted the savanna to win, as its features seemed the most unique, but overall this vote wasn't controversial, and most people seemed to be content with it. 2019 was mostly the same, with another biome vote where new features and mobs would be added, alongside a biome revamp. The first biome was the Badlands, or Mesa as literally everybody else knows it as. The update would add tumbleweeds, vultures, and a new type of flowery cactus. Now, I immediately saw vultures and thought of phantoms and bats, and how annoying vultures could be. I honestly think all flying enemies in Minecraft are just doomed to fail now. The Badlands got voted out in the first poll. The swamp was the next biome listed, featuring treasure boats, frogs, and mangrove trees. And while it didn't win, it would be getting updated next year in the recently announced wild update. So that's pretty cool, I guess. Finally, there was mountains, which included powdered snow, goats, and most importantly, improved mountain generation. Mountains for the longest time were quite disappointing, and instead of being called extreme hills, they should have been called extreme disappointments, barely even reaching half of the world's build height and failing to live up to their name. An update for mountains was long overdue, and we'll be seeing the updated mountains in-game in roughly 1-2 to two months with the release of 1.18, which is very exciting. 2020 saw the return of the mob vote, and the return of controversy. This mob vote featured three mobs I'm sure you all know too well. The Moo Bloom, Isologer, and Glow Squid. The Moo Bloom, or Piss Cow, was basically a yellow flower version of the Mushroom Cow that would spawn in flower forests and interact with bees in some way. They also would give Buttercup upon being sheared, but nobody knows what that would have been used for. The Moo Bloom got voted out in the first round. Then there was the Iceologer, also nicknamed the Chillager, which was a hostile mob unique to the mountain biome that would hurl ice clouds at players. This was quite a cool concept, as at the time there wasn't any unique mobs that spawned in mountain biomes, and the Iceologer had an interesting new mechanic. It also would have fit with the theme of the original 1.17, considering mountains were planned to be updated then, but alas, it would lose to the Glow Squid. The Glow Squid was just a normal squid that looked slightly glowy. 
And get this, it doesn't even emit light like a torch in vanilla Minecraft. You have to use Optifine for it to actually be properly glowing. Anyways, its only use was its ink sacs, which could make signs have glowy text. That was it. And I'm sure you already know what happened. Some certain YouTubers influenced the vote, leading to lots of controversy on Twitter, which is still brought up to this very day. However, the saddest thing was that up to this point, we had yet to vote in a mob with unique mechanics in the rare opportunities we had. And supposedly, while the losing mobs this time weren't banished to the Shadow Realm, it seems unlikely that they would be added in the near future. A very disappointing vote once more. However, there was redemption. The recent 2021 mob vote was for the player buddy mobs, mobs who should follow around players and do things with or for them. This mob vote got a lot of attention, with players making sure not to screw this one up. The glare was the first mob included, a ghost-like mob that alerts players if an area is dark enough for hostile mobs to spawn. So basically, it was just a cute looking F3. The glare was not popular in the slightest, getting the least votes of any feature we've talked about today. The Copper Golem was the second mob, a small robot-like mob made with copper that would be attracted to copper buttons and would randomly press them. The Copper Golem would rust over time, turning into a statue if you didn't remove its oxidation with an axe or lightning. The Copper Golem lost in the second round. Finally, there was the LA, the only mob which actually had a useful purpose. A small fairy-like mob that can pick up or collect certain items you set it up to and drop them when in range of a note block. The LA would win the vote. I could see this mob being used in farms or item sorters and other various collection systems, and the majority of players were glad the LA won. So, after all these votes, you may be wondering, Mr. Epic, what mobs and biomes did you vote for? And my answer is none, because all these live streams happen at 4am in Australia, and as much as I'd like to stay up, I doubt my parents would be very happy to know I was awake all night, only to lose a vote to a squid. Anyways, that wraps up the video though. If you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment. Join my Discord and follow me on Twitter. Thank you all so much for watching.